hi guys yeah welcome back to the crafty bee channel today we are going to be learning how to draft a female trouser pattern with a pocket and with a zipper flap so if you want to know how to draft this pattern please watch the video to the end so that you can understand it well so if you are joining us for the first time you are welcome please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also don't forget to on your notification bell to be able to get notified anytime I upload a new tutorial and also don't forget to share my videos to support this channel to my returning subscribers thank you so much for coming back to watch my videos i appreciate you all god bless you all so to draw this pattern you'll be needing your pattern paper your markers your scissors your different types of rulers it depends on the one you will be using and also a paper and a pen to calculate down your measurements so without wasting much of your time let's get on with the video so we are going to be creating a zipper fly in case you want to add a zipper to your trousers and also i'll be adding a waistband you will also be needing some measurements to create this trouser pattern your hip circumference your waist circumference your tie run measurements your knee measurement, your ankle measurement. Also your out seam, that's the trouser length, and in seam length, as well as your crotch line. So let's get to the drafting. I ruled a horizontal line on top here, which serves as my starting line, and also as my waist line. And on this center front, I mark a vertical line, where I'll be starting all my horizontal measurements from. Now I'm starting with my vertical measurements. So with the help of my measuring tape, I'm going to be measuring from my waist to my hip. In order to do that, in case you want to add a band to your trousers, you minus the height of the band before measuring from your waist to your hip. That means from your waist to your hip, you minus the waist band height that you are adding. But in this case, I'm making a high waist trousers. So I'm not going to deduct any inches from my length. So from my waist to my hip is eight inches. So I mark eight inches and I draw a line. Now from my waist to my crotch is 11 inches. I mark 11 inches. And to get your crotch measurement, you will sit on a hard surface and take the measurement from your waist to that hard surface you are sitting. And whatever you get is your crotch length. Or another way also of getting your crotch length is by dividing your hip measurement into four. And whatever you get is your crotch length. The third way of getting your crotch measurement is to take your measuring tape across from your center back on your waistline and bring it in front to the waist where you want your trouser to be. And that's another way of getting your crotch length. So I'm, I got 11, I mark 11, I draw the line. Next, you draw your tie length is usually about 3 inches below your crotch line so i mark three inches across and square it with a straight line next i'll be taking the measurement from my waist to my knee and from my waist to my knee is 22 inches i minus two inches so it's 20 inches above my knee and from my waist to my length the full length of the trouser is 38 inches or you can say the out seam is 38 inches. So I mark 38 inches here and I square it with a horizontal line. So now I'm laboring the lines. This is my waistline, my hip line, my crotch line, my tie line, my knee length, and then 
my ankle line. Now I will start imputing the horizontal measurements. I'm starting from my hip line. My hip divided by 4 is 11 inches. My hip is 44 inches divided by 4 is 11 inches. And I'm going to be adding 0.5 ease allowance making 11 and half inches. And I will be marking 11 and half inches on the hip line and on the crotch line and as well as on the waistline. And I'll draw a straight line. Next, I'll be taking the waist measurement. I'm starting from this line on the right side towards this place. And I'll be dividing my waist measurement by four. My waist is 39 inches divided by four is nine and a half. So I mark nine and a half and then 0 0.25 is allowance and then one inch for the dart. Then I will connect the point to meet the hip line like so with a curved ruler. Now to get your crotch extension, you measure what you have on your hip line from this point to this point and divide it by four and whatever you get you place it on your crotch line in this case i got 2.6 inches and i mark it on the crotch line next thing to do is to create the crotch curve and to create the crotch curve perfectly from this point you mark one and a half inch diagonally as shown then connect it from this point like so to meet the waistline and it should not be a deep curve so after creating the crotch curve the next thing you'll be doing is to shape the leg of your trousers and to do that go back to your crotch line and find the middle point of this line so the line the crotch line is 14 inches so the middle point of this line is 7 inches so you are going to be marking 7 inches on the crotch line on the hip line on the waist line across down to the ankle line and connect it with a straight line so this line is known as the center line or the green line now that this line is drawn you now start to impute the tie measurement, the knee measurement, the ankle measurement, and you'll be dividing all these measurements by two. So my tie is 27 inches divided by two is 13.5 inches. I find the 13.5 inch on my tape roll and then fold it in half and place it on the grain line and divide the 13.5 on each side of the line. So you come on the line and find the midpoint and mark the midpoint of the knee line. So coming down to my knee line, my knee circumference is 21 inches. 21 divided by 2 is 10 and half. You come down on this knee line and find the midpoint of the 10.5 inches on your measuring tape and mark it on both sides and divide the 10.525 on both sides you then come to the ankle line and do the same and find the midpoint of the half of the ankle measurements and mark it on both sides on the grain line once you are done making all this line you connect the point from the crotch to the knee with a curved ruler and from the knee to the ankle with a straight ruler. From the other side, you cut it from the hip line to the tie line in a shape way and then in a shape method and connect it with a straight ruler down to meet the ankle line. That's the trouser length. Now I'll be adding two inches on the ankle for the hemming allowance. To do that, you fold the down like so and then square the line so that you get a slant line because if you draw the line straight you'll be short of fabric when hemming the bottom so you have to slant it like so and the next thing to do is to create the waist dart so this center line serves as our dart line so you mark one half inches 
for the front dart line and take one inch we added initially on the waistline for the dart intake and you are going to divide it and mark half an inch on each side of the dart line and draw the dart legs and now I'll be drafting my pocket on the waist inner line I'm taking two and a half inches for my pocket and on the waist line I'll be coming down by six inches so to draw the shape of the pocket opening like so and connect the line so after creating the pocket opening I'm going to determine the length of the pocket how long I want the pocket to be so I'm marking from the waistline to the crotch line so I'm taking from the second that leg I'll be marking a dotted line with my pencil all the way to the crotch line then I'll go ahead and create my zipper fryer I'm taking two inches width for the zipper fryer and then eight inches for the length two inches for the zipper fryer and eight inches for the length and I mark it with a straight line then when you reach where the eight inches end you are going to draw a curve line to meet the crotch curve so guys I'm tracing the back pattern off camera and then continue with the front pattern so guys I finished tracing the back pattern down and I went ahead and added half an inch seam allowance on the opening of the pocket and also add half an inch all around the pattern you add the seam allowance from all the sides of the trouser and also on top of the waistline you don't add on the hemline then I went ahead and cut it out So now I'll go ahead and trace the pattern for the pocket. After tracing the pocket pattern, you go ahead and cut it out. So this is my pocket. I'm feeling my pocket already. It's so nice, isn't it? So family, this is how the front pattern look like. So I'll be putting it aside and then we will be drafting the back panel. Now you will be drafting the back panel. As you can see, I have already drew out the lines. This is the waist line and this is the hip line. This is the crotch line, this is the tie line, this is the knee line, and this is the ankle line. And I already drew out the center line, known as the grain line. And I also mark the two inches for the hemming allowance. So now we'll be starting with the crotch line. So as you can see on the front panel, this crotch line, we went in by one and a half inch. Let me mark it to the We went in by one and a half inch in the front panel so that you get the line perfectly. The line should not go inside. So here we mark one and a half inch for the crotch. We are going to mark this crotch extension for the back part so we put this one side so for the back we are going to create the crotch extension for the back panel and by doing that we mark two inches here you can go all the way up to two and a half 
two inches here and then you come down by half an inch like so then here you go out by two inches so to get a perfect swatch curve for the back banner so we go in by two inches like so and then coming to the waistline you are going to find the midpoint of this line so it's 4.2 so the midpoint will be 2.1 from here now we leave this mark down let's come back to this corner you see this line this corner here you are going to measure what you have here that's three inches and when you come to the back panel it's three inches also so you are going to mark three these three inches on top of these points on the waistline that's what you got from here like this to drag the front the back panel we start from the crotch line we have to extend the crotch line for the back and we went in by two inches and came down by half an inch so in this corner here you go up by two inches in the front panel we went up by one and a half inches but in this back panel we went up by two inches and then these two inches now we leave it we are going to connect you are going to create the crotch line with it for the back after creating the crotch extension you come to the waistline on this line and the center line that's the gray line you are going to find the middle point of this line so this is the middle point now you come back down here and measure what you have from this point to this point you measure whatever you have here um, in this case my own is three inches so this three inches from here you are going to extend it here so now we are going to create the back crotch and then to create the curve to create a crotch curve for the back you are going to create it from this half an inch because this is the new crotch like this where you mark it from you mark it from here like so take it to this point then connect it all the way to this line you connect it up to this line so that's what i'm going to do now So this is the, the back crotch curve. So when you are done with the crotch now, you are going to create the waist for the back. And the front waist is straight, but the back waistline is going to be slanted. So after creating the crotch curve for the back, you now measure the waist line here from this point to this point and whatever you have you are going to use it to create the back waist line so in this case I got 10.75 so I'm going to mark 10.75 here next line to it like this and mark then I'm going to use my ruler to connect it. After creating the back waistline, we are going to shape the trouser leg. In order to do that, you add one inch for the time measurement, you add one for the knee line, you add one inch for the ankle and the hem line. And on the other side of the ankle line you add one inch 
and on the Nina you want add one inch, but here you don't add one inch. And you are going to be taking the line from the crotch line from here to this knee line and then straight to the ankle line. And on this side, you are going to be connecting from this back waistline. So this is not the back waistline. You are going to connect to meet the tie line to the knee and then to the ankle line. So let me do that. If you are watching me and you never subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit on the subscribe button and hit on the notification bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. And also hit on the like button if you find this tutorial interesting. So this is how the back banner look like so the next thing is to create your waist that for the back in order to do that you are going to be measuring whatever you have here on this line that you might be for whatever you have on this line and then you transfer it to the up line 4.2 so I'll be marking 4.2 here and I'll be marking 4.2 here too and 4.2 so as you can see the back crotch it's not like the front crotch so in this case this line here is straight like this before Curving it to the crotch line, and this waistline is straight, but the back waistline will be parallel to the crotch line because the crotch line is not straight. So the that leg for the back is five inches. And you connect the line straight like this. That's so that it will be parallel to this crotch line because it's not straight, it's slant. So this that to the that leg should also be in accordance with the shape here. So now whatever we took from the front for the waist that is the same thing we are going to be marking on the back waist that is one inch and we divide it into two so half on each side like so so you should remember that in the front waistline we added ease allowance and also the that one inch for the that intake so all is included on the back waistline so we'll be connecting from this point to this point and then from this to here so you see the back that is light that goes with this so this is for the back so this is for the back panel of the trousers this is our trouser back panel so we are done with our back trouser Panel. We finish drafting our back trousers. So the next thing to do is to take half an inch sewing allowance on the top here, on the crotch cap here, on this side of the trouser, and then on this side of the trousers. But under the hemline, we are not going to add any same allowance. So I'm going to do that. So guys, I've gone ahead and added the half inch sewing allowance for all the back panel. So I label here back panel. We'll be cutting two pieces where you are cutting it on the fabric. So cut two pieces. 
So this is how the back panel of our trouser look like. So what I'm going to do next is to cut it out. So this is our back panel and this is our front panel and this is how our front panel looks like. This is the band for the trousers. This is the pocket and I'm going to attach it first to see how it looks like. But if you don't want a pocket for your trousers, what you are going to do is to take the pocket pattern and then place it under the front panel like this. And you can hold it with masking tape and then you cut your trousers. Maybe you want a trouser without a pocket, only maybe side, you see. So you can just solo tape he it here and then cut the side. So this is how our front trouser look like. The trouser pattern I will call it look like and this is our back panel. So guys we have come to the end of today's tutorial. If you find this video interesting and helpful please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and then hit on the notification bell to be notified anytime I upload a new video. And also share it with your soulmates. Share it to help grow this channel. So in my next video, I'll be cutting it on a fabric and sew it. And I'll show you how you fix your band and also how you hold your dance. So this is it. This is my back panel. So thank you for watching. See you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.